Robert, good afternoon. Here we are sitting in the roof garden above the Canary Wharf station. And lovely afternoon. It was your idea to talk about the Crossrail Elizabeth Line project. What interests you about it? London is to be transformed. We now have two main RER type uh, rapid transit systems. Uh, North-South it's Thameslink, East-West it's the Elizabeth Line. That sounds like e London planning, economic planning, rather than our own professional interest. The, the point about this is that it gives a major opportunity to transform much or indeed the whole of London. What impact would you like it to have? What I would like it to have is a major shift from uh, the use of the private car to public transport uh, walking and to uh, cycling. And you mentioned a particular interest in the stations and so we've been to look at all of them that have opened in 2022. What interest do you have there? Well we've got some opportunities which have been taken by TfL and some opportunity Transport for London and some opportunities which haven't been taken but are still there. I mean, at the general level, my view is that the Elizabeth Line is a wonderful thing for London. It's faster journeys and more connectivity, and that's terrific. But I, 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 in terms of return on investment, I think they would have got better value for money in building a cycle network before building the train network and certainly in terms of benefit cost ratio they hoped to get a ratio of two to one for t for crossrail elizabeth line and it it must have fallen below that because the price went up and the completion time took longer so i guess the ratio was about 1.75 to 1 whereas for cycling cycle network they could have got somewhere between 5 to 1 and 20 to 1 so I think they should have done that first. However uh, the point is that we now have as a result of this as I said right at the beginning north-south Thameslink and east-west uh, communication which links at a strategic level in other words links with all the main airports Stansted, yeah. um, it's a wonderful project. City, City Airport, no Heathrow, mm. uh, Gatwick Ten thing goes down to, to both Gatwick and, and, and to Brighton. What we haven't seen is sufficient attention to connectivity. How many stations have we seen which have got uh, um, cycle hire provision, cycle storage provision? Well, we've seen some or, of it. Or links with uh, uh, decent cycle routes. We've seen some of it. Farringdon stations got a good quality cycleway beside it. And there's here we are at Canary Wharf, there's cycle storage for hire bikes actually, just outside the station doors. There's some of it, but not enough. Not enough, and not at all the stations. Other stations have got nothing in terms of uh, cycle connectivity, or um, such as Woolwich, which I, I believe is a good station, but, but, but what I'm talking in terms of landscape architecture, uh, the only cycle route is to the river. It's just yeah doesn't connect. Mm -hmm. So connections is what we should be concentrating on. It's got, it's got a connection with the bus network and pedestrian network, but Woolwich is very short of good cycle routes, although it has got pretty well supervised cycle storage just outside the station. I mean, that's the merit of Woolwich. And the comparison would be obviously with Denmark or with uh, uh, anywhere in Holland, Holland. Mm. or more, more closely because it started mm. from a very poor level of cycle provision to a very high level of cycle provision is Paris mm. where there's a city-wide network. The problem in London is that uh, uh, responsibility is divided between the GLA and uh, the London boroughs for cycle provision and that also applies for pedestrian provision, provision uh, mm. and for uh, connections to uh, uh, bus routes. Stations without cycle parking, and obviously not Whitechapel, um, Custom House has got cycle parking below the station. 
Farringdon, I don't think there's any cycle parking, was there? Uh, no, the, the, as I recall, the nearest uh, uh, cycle hire facilities are in Hatton Garden. And, 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 and there is a cycle route directly outside, uh, but uh, um, you can't go out, um, either pick up your own bike or pick up a cycle hire bike and then uh, use that cycle route. And, and Paddington has got a place that looks good for fastening cycles with a notice to say, do not fix your bicycle here. And I don't think there's any cycle parking out at the crossrail exit from Paddington Station, is there? Uh, we didn't see any. No. no. OK, um, but bus networks, because London's pretty good for that, they're all reasonably connected. So, so the next thing is greenways. I mean, I'd love to see a London-wide greenway network in the sense of environmental routes, with or without planting, that are good to walk along, you know, safe, pollution-free. And have we seen any connection between the crossrail network and the greenway network. We've seen token pedestrianisation such as at Farringdon where yes. part part of Cowcross Street yeah. has been pedestrianised, mm. which is an achievement, it makes it much pleasant. But only a couple of hundred metres. But only a couple it? of hundred mm. metres, it's mm. not part of a wider network. Mm. Um, uh, similarly, Liverpool Street, again, local pedestrianisation, uh, direct pedestrianisation between the main line station mm. and uh, the uh, Elizabeth Line station exit. There is one actually in the station as well, mm. uh, which works very well, but uh, nothing wider. A Abbey Wood, there is a cycle lane, a new cycle lane just outside the station, but it's only about 500 metres long, although within that 500 metres it takes you to Leslie's Abbey Wood where there's one of those things that you can just about get a bicycle through, but not a motor bicycle. But if you take your bike through that, there's, there's lovely cycling in Lesney's Woods. There's uh, a very am ample and covered cycle shed at uh, Abbey Wood Station, but it's on the wrong side of the road. It's not yeah. by the station. Mm. You've got to cross a fairly busy road. Very busy. And I'd be scared from my bicycle being stolen because it'd be quite easy for a chap with an angle grinder to cut through my lock and make off with my bicycle. You need people near bicycles to stop people from attacking them with machinery. And that's also raising the question of, of seating. Um, thinking again about Abbey Wood. Uh, uh, there aren't seats in the station entrances. There's, there's, there's good seating inside the station, the other side of the ticket barrier, and there's some rather harsh seating, like the stuff we're on now, outside, you know, with no back and cold and I think, I think exposed to the rain as well. So not comfortable seating. Not comfortable seating and not directly under cover outside the station. You know, I, f I forgot to read this before, but when we get into the details of the site design around the station, site planning and site design around the stations, I see an immediate connection between Christopher Alexander's pattern number 92, which was admittedly for bus stops. But if we, I substitute the word station, listen to this. And here his conclusion to the pattern is, so build stations so that they form tiny centres of public life, so that they work together with several other activities, at least a newsstand, maps, outdoor shelter, seats, and in various combinations, corner groceries, smoke shops, coffee bar, tree places, and special road crossings. And that, all of those points apply to stations as Except well. they become major centres for commercial development, recreation yes. development, for public life. And how much of that have we seen in the stations we've visited? How much commercial development associated with the station? Well, we're at Canary Wharf, where the commercial development preceded uh, the El yeah. Elizabeth Line, and uh, the Elizabeth Line is um, presumably making the commercial development more attractive, more but, expensive, in other words, but, you know, more valuable think of a station as a blob it's obviously got railways going that way it should have you know bus route cycle route greenway spreading the good influence of the station over as wide an area and then the London wide networks as possible. Farringdon is the major opportunity where there needs to be further development 
of public connections and public spaces and public networks. It's an incomparable situation, the crossing of Thames Link and uh, the, the Elizabeth Line, good tube connections, good bus connections, it's got everything going for it. And an example with massive potential and very little achievement so far is Custom House Station, which really seems like an airport terminal in that it's way isolated from everything around. It's sort of up in the air and walk, you know, walkways going at different angles and directions, but there's, there's a lot of developable land and it could become what Christopher Alexander envisages and it very much isn't at present. But it does have a toilet and that's another thing that we looked at with all these stations and what only about half of them have got toilets and at our age Robert it becomes an important urban facility does it not? Uh, it does indeed. <laughs> and another thing that, that we did as how useful or not it was I don't quite know was an assessment sheet for each of the stations and using our usual categorization from Vitruvius of commodity, firmness and delight, utility, um, firmness and aesthetic quality. What do you think about, the, which station do you think has got the most commodity utility? Food and drink, toilets, buses, which station comes best for that? Well, it could be Liverpool Street because of the existing railway station and the facilities around. Um, for the future, it's going to be Farringdon, uh, which is, has got the great advantage of the two mainline railways. Elizabeth Line is a mainline railway. It's an intercity uh, railway connecting to, to Reading in, in the west, which is a city. Uh, is it not? Yeah. Should be anyway, uh, and uh, Brighton in the, in the south, and uh, uh, certainly a city like Peterborough and Cambridge in the north. Yeah. In interpreting firmness as sustainability, we didn't see much of that, did we? There's a little bit of green wall outside outside Canary Wharf. Tom, that sort of green wall isn't uh, no, it's sustainable. Not. It's plastic based, it's based on uh, a constant irrigation. You win, you win, I agree with that point. We've um, seen very little in the way of sustainable green walls. In other words, uh, say Virginia creeper growing up a wall or ivy clad walls. You're right, you're right. And nor have we seen much evidence of green roofs. I mean, there's this, which is wonderful, but it's kind of disconnected from the, the station, which is what, five levels below where we're sitting. Yeah, and it's, it's not a particularly sustainable it's garden. Not, it's not, not at all. There are a lot, lot of inputs. Uh, and, and we haven't seen any evidence of so rain gardens, surface water management at all, have we? None. Just forgotten. No, we haven't. Uh, um, and as for biodiversity, there's a little bit of planting we saw outside Abbey Wood Station. There's a few trees, but really very little planting. Um, Woolwich being the, the major mm -hmm. exception, but that is not thanks to Transport for London. No, it's not, but, but, but it's a, it, it is a great success. I mean, one doesn't think of Woolwich as being one of the most salubrious parts of London, but around the, the new Elizabeth Line Station, the quality is very good. Mm. So that takes us on to Venustas, um, which Wooten translated as delight, which was a bad translation, but from, let's, call it, let's call it scenic quality. W which do you think is, um, say you had to take a photograph to illustrate a book on urban design, which of the stations would you put at the top of the well, list? Well, Custom House, I believe, is sublime. It's uh, uh, amazing, a, cele a celebration of uh, uh, services. Well, I, I beg to differ. I know you do. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the places that would top my list are Farringdon and Woolwich. Uh, Woolwich is picturesque. Um, Farringdon is okay, but it's not beautiful. No, it's not beautiful. So, so here, here's it's not beautiful, it's not picturesque, it's not sublime. So if, if we'd said which are the best in terms of scenic quality, 
also which are the worst and obviously custom house for you is the, is the worst and for you um, well, Abbeywood is a bit banal it could be much better though because it has got development potential around the station hasn't it I think in the next few years one it will be extended uh, along the North Kent line and uh, Two, it'll be rebuilt again. It's a vast improvement on the previous well, station. I tell you what, we you need a shot of the previous station. Okay. What you've forgotten about is Tottenham Court Road. How, how does that rate for you? Well, Tottenham Court Road is Tottenham Court Road anyway, so it's not really making much difference. But so they've far. actually made but it worse. You know, the 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 water feature which Seaford put in in front of Centre Point is better than the extraordinary bit of. It's actually a, a glazed roof that you walk on, and so it's covered in hazard warning lines, and it's all scratched already. And it, it look as though you're not supposed to walk on it. I mean, you it's just an urban disaster. You can area. walk around uh, uh, Centre Point now. Yes, you can. Oh, yes, oh, that's more good. More that, Now we're talking about scenic quality. Well, that, that, impro that improves the scenic quality. It's no longer traffic dominated, so the views are, are more pleasant. Now, the, um, another station we haven't mentioned and we ought to is Whitechapel. Well, Whitechapel is marvellous because of the hubbub of the market as you leave. Um, it's just glorious to, to enter. But, but would you like to have had a tree and some seats I and a toilet? I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind a toilet. I wouldn't mind a few more seats, but there are seats. Uh, what I wouldn't want is for a landscape architect to be paid to do it over. It's splendid as it is. It's people operating. I don't want I, granite paving and... No. Um, but it would be like, good to have a proper cycle lane along the Whitechapel Road, And there's it? space for it. There is. It's, it's just uh, that section by the station. Mm -hmm. It's just the, uh, uh, the uh, city bound uh, route, uh, which uh, the westward bound route, which is a uh, proper cycleway. The other is shared. Another station we didn't look at, because it's not open yet, is Bond Street. But that, that, that's going to be more like Woolwich than the other stations that we've seen. It opens onto Hanover Square and TfL does, haven't done much. I think they've done anything. Or well, they've done some pedestrianisation to be fair, at least they have done that. But in, in, as far as I can see, no seating, no planting, don't know about a toilet. But it's going, to, it's going to be a really nice place to arrive in central London. It's a calm, classic London square. Well, when, it, when it reopens, maybe we should have a short... Yeah two-minute video as an afterthought and of course we should also return in five years time to see what's happened to these places I think I imagine it's coming every five years for the next 25 years at the very least Robert I mean, we <laughs> you're young and hot Tom <laughs> thank you very much anything else you want to say no nope. no thank you bye